Hey guys, Colleen here, DIY or behind lemonthistle.com, and today I am excited to do a video that has been a really long time coming. It was really quick to make, but it took me such a long time to get around to it for some reason. So today I'm excited to talk about my photo editing workflow with you, and then I'm also going to talk about how to make your own presets. Again, just to speed things up. This video is all about efficiency in Lightroom. I hope that at the end of it, you will have some new tips and tricks and shortcuts to make your photo editing speedier and more efficient, but also maybe a little bit better. We'll see what you get out of it. If you're thinking, oh, I don't use Lightroom, I use Photoshop, for goodness sakes, please, please watch this video and then start using Lightroom. You will save so much time. And you can also jump back and forth between the apps, which I don't show in this video, but you can take a photo from your Lightroom carousel and you can pop it into Photoshop, make whatever tweak you feel like you can't make in Lightroom and then bring it back into Lightroom and keep on going. So I have been doing photos for longer than I've been blogging. I used to second, so be like the second shooter for photographers. So I would go to weddings and I'd come back and I'd have hundreds of photos to edit. So this is the process that I would use. Before we get started, I feel like it's important to note that I am not an expert. I am not a professional photographer, but I mean, I do do this for my job full time. So <laughs> blogging is a weird thing. You're like pretty good at a lot of things, but not really an expert at any of them. All right, before we get started, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do that below so you don't miss out on any more DIY or home decor videos or the occasional photography video. <laughs> And let's get started. All right, so once I have imported my files into Lightroom, and that's how I process all of my imports, is I do it through Lightroom instead of in files. And I do it by month, and then I export into whatever folders they need to be in. So right now I am editing my fall home tour photos, and I've done these ones back here. I'm going to do these ones, but I want to show you how I do my workflow. So when I get them all imported, they look like this in a grid format. I go through and I look at them up close and I hit P for pick on any that I want to edit and use. So I go through just really quickly. The ones I like, I would hit P and you can see that I've already done that here like this one here is flagged. And then if you change your mind, you can unflag it. Some people choose to rate them with stars and you can do that just by hitting the different numbers on your keyboard. But I just choose to keep it really simple with a pick or not pick. And then once you have done that, there's a few different ways to look at them. I like to click here and click flagged. So it only shows me the ones that I've picked. Now, if I'm looking and I'm like, I have way too many of my living room, which you can see I do here, then you can go in and you can select all the photos of your living room and hit N to compare them. So in here I could say, you know what, these two here are super similar. So you can enter in, look at which one, and I can see this one here focuses on the flowers, this one here focuses on the whole room. I prefer the whole room, so I'm gonna go back to N this one's the whole room, this one's the flowers, so I'm gonna click that flag and it's gonna disappear because I'm only looking at the flagged ones. So then again, I can look and I can say, hmm, these two look super similar. So then you can go in and you look and look at them up close. I mean, I've already edited this one, so I think that I like it better. Yeah. So I'm gonna go back to N and I'm going to click the flag and remove the flag on that one. So you can do that as many times as you need to as many photos as you need until you are happy with the amount that you have flagged. And again, I think that I still have too many flagged. I have so many for this because I am doing a video and a blog post. So for the blog post, I prefer all vertical photos, but for the video, I need horizontal photos in high resolution. So I have the same photo two ways. All right, so once I've done that, I make sure that I'm on flagged and I go to develop. And this is where you will do all of your editing. Okay, so you can see I've edited this one, but I have not edited this one. So when I am editing, the first thing I like to do for room shots specifically, not for closer craft shots, is I like to enable profile correction. I do that on all of them. 
But then for rooms in particular, I like to do transform and I like to choose auto. So this just makes it look more level. It usually aligns with the walls or the most prominent uh, lines in the room. And then I like to check it because I always like the corner of a room lined up, the vertical lines. And then from there, you can kind of crop it however you like. So once that's done, then you can go in and apply any presets. Now I've gone and made my own here. So this is the one that I generally use for home. This is the one I generally use for printables or crafts. So if you have a preset, you can click on that and you can use it. I'm going to undo that so I can show you what I would do otherwise. So the first thing I like to do is I like to apply my exposure. This one is really bright here because of the window. So I'm going to apply exposure through a gradient filter here. So you can drop down, you can choose any of these edits and I'm gonna drag that from this side over. And I'm gonna boost that. And I think that's good. So generally home photos, especially on Instagram, people like really white and bright and almost blown out. So even though I wouldn't edit people that way, that's how I edit home. And if there were any spots that you wanted to really focus on adding uh, as a focal point, you could go in and you could add some exposure to that area. And you could even go in and you could add contrast and you could add clarity or dehaze, which is going to kind of darken the darker areas and keep the lighter ones bright. And so I also am going to up the shadows a little bit there. So when I zoom back out, you can see that much more in focus than you could before. The next thing that I would do is I would adjust the temperature to make sure it is as warm or as cool as I would like. I generally prefer warmer, and that's because I have a lot of these warm neutrals in my house. Um, but I also like to make sure that the walls look white and not orange. And then I always up contrast. And even just a little bit makes a big difference, but you could go as far as you want until it starts to look fake. And I'd say that started to look fake, so I would bring it back down. As you change these settings, it does make the colors quite vibrant. So I generally pull the vibrancy down, usually only around four, but sometimes depending on what you have in the photo, you could go down to minus six. And then I like to increase clarity as well. And this is another one you kind of want to go easy or else it starts to get really fake looking. Although I guess if you didn't see the before, you would never know. So that's before, that's where we're at right now. You could also down the saturation. If you're going to do that again, just really easy. I only bring it down a couple. Then if there were specific colors that you wanted to play with, say that you had a really orange cast reflecting from the sunlight coming in or... If your greens were being all funky, which happens sometimes with plants, I don't know what it is. I'm just going to add a little bit more exposure right here. So you do that by coming down here. HSL might be what it's on. I go to color and then I adjust each color individually. So I like to darken the greens and I like to make them less orange. And that balances the warmer temperature that I've done up at the top. Split toning is one that I actually do use. I don't know how many people use it. I only use it for my highlights, not for my shadows. And so if you click here, you can pick which color you want in your highlights and you can see how it changes the color dramatically. So I only use like a teeny tiny bit and you can go way down here. Just the 4% is perfect for me. You can see how that changes the white from being a true white here to kind of a tan, but I really like how cozy that feels for home. So that's why I do that gonna tweak that a little bit more. So from here I would probably be really happy with this. This actually seems really warm to me so I might drop it down a little bit now that I've added that. So this is my before, this is my after and you can see that really plays well with what I have here. So this was with my preset. This is the before, this is the after. And then this one, you just watched me edit. This is the before, this is the after. The other things you could play with, you could play with this and you could bring your highlights up or down. 
Oh, that's the other thing I usually do, actually. Let me come up here. I usually play with these sliders right here. So I generally like to bring my blacks down. I like to bring my shadows up. And I like to bring my highlights up or down, depending on if there's windows in the room. So you can see how that changes things. And if I'm doing crafts, I especially like to play with this white slider. In crafts, I really like to jack it up. But in rooms with windows, I like to bring it down so that it doesn't feel so blown out. And as you play with those, then you can go back and you can adjust your exposure. The other thing I wanted to show you is that if you really like these settings and you want them for all your photos, because they are all in the same room, which as bloggers, most of our photos are all in the same room, you can go and you can select all the photos from that room and you can hit sync as long as you are in this develop window. From here, you can select which ones you want to sync. I never select local adjustments unless it's the exact same angle and I want to have the same graduated filters on there. And I do select lens profile corrections, provided that I know I'm using the same lens in all these photos. And I don't select transform. I like to do that on each one. And I hit synchronize and you can see them all down here. Adjust. So from here, I still like to go in and I like to look at them. So this is before, this is after those adjustments I've made to the last photo. So from here, I need to go in and still transform auto and it will straighten everything up. And then I can do my individual adjustments, which in this case is brighten it up. And I like it. That's how simple it is. I don't put any grain in my photos, but you could do that if they were for photos of people, I would add some grain for depth. If you really like this setting and you find that you're doing the same thing every time you open up Lightroom, you can create your own presets. So you do that up here at the top of presets and you select which settings you want to include and then you title your preset and you can put it under your, your uh, user presets here. So I could say um, warm interior preset and then I could save it going to because it's essentially the one I've created already. Last but not least, if you wanted to save this preset and be able to use it from mobile, you can go back to library and you can export as a DNG right here. So if you export to DNG, you can export it wherever. It'll save as a DNG. You can open it up in mobile and add it in Lightroom mobile. If that is something that you're interested in learning more about, I'm happy to put together a video on that. Just leave a comment. Oh, lastly, how I export photos. So I go in and I select all the ones I want to export from down here. And then you can select which subfolder you want to put them in. And you can name them. And then this is where it gets really cool. I always name them. I have a custom sequence, which includes the date. And then you can resize to fit. So my blog width is 750 and then screen size is 72 pixels per inch. But if you wanted to export it for video, I generally export at 2200. Or if you wanted to export for print, then I leave this blank and I put this to 300. And I don't really have issues with poor sizing. Oh, and then Instagram is the other one. I put that to 72 again because it's for screens and I generally put to 1200. And then if you wanted to watermark, you can set up your own watermarks. Easy peasy, I don't watermark all that often anymore. But then you hit export, it'll go there for you. And that is it, it makes the workflow super quick to edit a ton of photos fast. And I really like the consistent look that I get with all my photos when I sync them all. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something new and maybe can speed up your workflow a little bit. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos. Okay, we'll see you guys next time.